heute bei der Netzpolitikkonferenz 2017. Ich bin Katrin und ich habe mit mir Walter van Holst. Und wir werden gleich auf Englisch darüber sprechen, was er macht und wie, wovon sein Talk heute handelt. Hallo Walter. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do? Uh, my day job, I practice law in the IT context. Uh, but my relationship with Netzpolitik is that I volunteer with a Dutch NGO that's also a member of EDRI, European Digital mm -hmm. Rights, which is the umbrella of European NGOs involved in digital rights. Um, DigiGas, CCSA, are German members of that, among others. So that's more or less that's my relationship to Netzpolitik. The world. Okay. And um, when, since you're a lawyer, what is your special area of expertise? ICT, contracts, yes. data protection. Um, open source licensing, okay. software licensing. What is your talk going to be about today? And my talk will be about uh, certain preventable pitfalls when, the, when we get to the point that we will legislate product liability for the Internet of Things or software yes. in general. I mean, uh, I take the Internet of Things as a very broad idea because we have so much software that is now entering our physical sphere. Um, where we traditionally allow software makers to exonerate themselves from any liability through mm -hmm. the, the licensing contract. At some point there will be so much political pressure on the, the producers of all those artifacts in lives like self-driving cars or our routers at home or our smart thermostats to take some responsibility for safety and security incidents um, through product liability laws. Um, um, I feel that it is a good thing for civil society not only think about what's now the legislative agenda, like the current copyright dossier or e-privacy, but also start thinking about what will be on the agenda in a year or two. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason I propose this talk for uh, this event. Can you, uh, can you give us an example of what the liability and software and Internet of Things, when does all that come into play? Um, well, it, it, it will come play at several levels. Uh, there's, there's talk about product liability for the people who make the products mm -hmm. and that, that have software in them. But there's also uh, already ongoing a discussion in legal literature about people who operate. Um, mm -hmm. For example, shouldn't there be an obligation for people to update their home routers? Because, or the, for example, a fairly recent incident in the Internet of Things was when all these cheap IP cameras were being used for denial of service attacks because there was a, um, a vulnerability in the firmware. No, shouldn't the producer of the cameras publish patches or be liable for the fact that they put out a defective product? But also should be people who own such a camera have a responsibility to update their, their equipment in a, in, a, in a timely manner. Um, and uh, and uh, the similar things um, you, can, you can have the conversation about, let's say, uh, software in cars mm -hmm. that become more and more involved in actual driving things. So, yeah, liability questions are starting to rise. Yeah. And what does that to you, to you um, have to do with net politics? Um, my biggest fear is that if we do it the wrong way, uh, we end up in a situation where anyone who publishes software, including let's say people who have an open source software project, uh, who may be just a single individual who just is sharing an interesting piece of code that may have been reused in something else, may be confronted with a liability issue. So there's, a, uh, there's an issue of code as free speech, that's to me a, a fundamental rights issue. There's also a competition issue. Um, liability regimes tend to favor large players in markets, so it may become a barrier to entry and, and, and uh, reduce the competitiveness of uh, small and medium-sized enterprises. That's more of a liberal argument uh, uh, there. Um, and another thing that is uh, a big worry to me is an unintended consequence could be that people who bring um, security issues or safety issues in, in, in software to the forward, like security, the infosec community, uh, security researchers, they already are vulnerable to complaints about um, them being hackers or mm -hmm. having, and in, the, in case of there's a liability aspect to it, the incentive for producers of software to go after the researcher that put them in a bad light is much higher than it already is. 
Okay. That's that's to me one of the uh, potential risks of such a future. Okay. What uh, would you suggest, since in Germany we'll soon be having um, elections, what would you maybe suggest to... Uh, uh, Election-wise, I would focus on the current uh, European, yeah. the actual yeah. uh, legislation. Like, well, like politicians uh, uh, who are in the Parliament, in the European Parliament, what would you suggest to them? Um, to start... Uh, this is a conversation to be had among many other people than just, let's say, um, do not just talk to Siemens or to RB or over to Mercedes or any of it, but also start to talk to people in the infrastructure community, start to talk to academia, and also involve um, civil society much more in, in, on this topic. Because otherwise you will end up in, in the kind of situation we already have in terms in, in the laws governing computer crimes that are overly broad, uh, in practice poorly implemented, and, and may actually have been counterproductive. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the short interview. Okay. Thank stay. you for having me. Bye.